Hey everyone, welcome back to Go Local Live. I'm Ava Gaudet. So next up in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center, I have a documentary filmmaker who is going to be premiering a, a film based on Rhode Island hip hop history. It's called Almost Dope. And uh, we're gonna be talking to Anna Gonzalez. Hi, Anna. Hey, Ava, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, it's my pleasure. Uh, so I saw that this film was going to be showing at the Columbus Theater, and I was like, this is amazing. I love this idea. I'm a huge fan of hip-hop, a huge fan of the Rhode Island hip-hop scene. So tell us a little bit about why you decided to make a documentary on this subject. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so I went to Brown, and so did my filmmaking partner, Jeff. And um, at Brown, I was really involved in the music scene. I play jazz bass, electric, and upright. So I played in a lot of hip hop groups, because uh, there's a lot of overlap. Uh, sure. And through kind of uh, people like Sideshow, um, Arias, and Eric Axeman, and Saul Castillo, kind of got involved in the hip hop scene. And they expressed this great history that Providence had. And it really dawned on me and Jeff that there's so much untold you know, history and stories and, and amazing people and talent that has gone kind of untouched. Um, so with, we, and, you know, in the past couple of years, we've started this production company that's based in both Providence and Philadelphia. And uh, we, we decided to apply to the Rhode Island Council for Humanities to uh, kind of explore this subject. And uh, we got a couple grants from them and it kind of set us into motion. So cool. So what was the process like as far as finding the people that you wanted to feature in the film? I mean, there's actually a lot of artists here, and, and it would probably be enough to make four or five movies. So how did you sort of decide who was going to be featured in the film? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, mostly it was, how, you know, who recommended who? And um, I do want to, you know, I want to say that this documentary is not supposed to be about the entire history of yes. hip hop in Rhode Island, because that would just be a disservice to the history of hip hop in Rhode Island. <laughs> and, you know, Eastern Connecticut and Southern Massachusetts, and there's so many people and really um, almost dope is really just eight stories mm -hmm. um, that kind of are emblematic of the time that they're from, because it's from the 80s to today. Um, but it's by no means, uh, you know, an encompassing totalitarian, uh, you know, history. So the way that we found people is we started out with a couple people that we knew, and we just had a lot of conversations, and they all recommended at least one or two people, and there was, and, you know, there's some really good, um, you know, recommendations, and the Rhode Island hip-hop community is so strong. People like Paris Fisher really connected us with a whole bunch of people, and um, even people who had moved from Rhode Island, we got them on the phone, and they gave us phone numbers of people who were still in Rhode Island, and, and it was just, it was kind of just like figuring it was a wild goose chase almost, and <laughs> years later, we have a felt. So. Yeah, I was going to say, was it, were, were there any of the, you know, maybe the older uh, guys who were kind of big in like the 70s, were they hard to track down? Were you, easy, you know, did you find them easily? Well, I will say Facebook is really, really helpful for anybody who needs to make a documentary on a budget because <laughs> you just search their names. So it's great right. and you can message them. Um, but yeah, there were a couple of people who weren't on social media at all, who wouldn't pick up their phone or um, but we eventually got to them just through persistence and, and you know, kill them with kindness and just being very open about what we wanted to do and the project we wanted to make and that if they wanted to be a part of it, they could be a part of it. So, yeah, definitely. That's I mean, that's the main reason why it took so long is to get everybody that, that we felt we could involve. And even now, I feel bad, you know, people still want to be involved and, and, um, and I really wish that they could be part of this documentary. Um, but we do have a website that we could, we are still going to be keeping up with uh, to put oral histories, uh, people at rihiphopproject.com. So that's the way people can be involved after the fact of the documentary. Oh, that's cool. Any, any chance of like a almost dope 
part two <laughs> where you cover some more people Maybe. or do you think you've, you've said what you needed to say? Um, I think for the foreseeable future, I don't know. I, I can't say yes or no. Um, I think if the right opportunity comes along, definitely. Yeah, but I definitely encourage people from Rhode Island, uh, people who aren't filmmakers, to go out and record their histories themselves, even if it's just for their own purposes, for their families, or if you're part of a, a group or a band, or you do graffiti, just document it because your story is important and you never know what kind of thing you can make with it in the future. Yeah, and you might not know who in the future is going to really care about that and, exactly. and want to see, you know, the, the evidence and, you know, relive it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I was watching a little kind of preview on the film and it was you and your, your filmmaking partner and there was something that you said about that it's not just about hip hop, but it's kind of like a window into Rhode Island too. So what do you think this film says about Rhode Island? Mm, that's, yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, it, well, you know, if you're born and raised in a place, you really represent that place, especially if you still live in it. Um, and so a lot of these people have the, that are in the film um, have this, real entrepreneurial character um, this really really this drive to make something uh, unique and self-defined that um, you know d that helps them survive in whatever way they want you know so that's I think that entrepreneurial spirit is really big also um, you know that perseverance that kind of defying odds to, to make it in whatever way you can is really big because Rhode Island is the smallest state and it often gets overlooked. People don't know it exists. People don't think it's a state. So, so um, it's really important that Rhode Islanders kind of boldly proclaim Rhode Island um, and, and are proud of it in, in, any, in any space they can. Oh, that's so true. Anyone from Rhode Island who has ever been anywhere else other than Rhode Island, when you tell them you're from here, it's like people think it's part of New York. People have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> Which brings me to another question. Yeah, so, so you're premiering the film at the Columbus Theater. You're going to be doing another screening, uh, I believe, this weekend? Or the uh, uh, Columbus Theater is Friday night. Then uh, Westerly Library is, I'm forgetting the date, I'm sorry. Monday, the 28th. Oh, the 28th. Okay. So, two screenings here in Rhode Island. I mean, I think you can expect that there are going to be people that really are committed to this, you know, uh, story because we're from here. We're fans of these people. How do you think this film will be received outside of Rhode Island? Yeah, that's, uh, that's something we've been wondering about, too. Could be because we're going to have a Philadelphia screening and maybe a Connecticut screening, possibly a New York screening. Um, I think people will be able to relate to this story, even if they've never been to Rhode Island, they have no idea about the geography or, or you know, the history. Um, because the people are so engaging and their stories are so true and interesting. And the music is... The bomb. The music is so good. We're gonna be releasing like some of the soundtrack. Online. Oh, that's, I was just so, going to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah. So the, some of these tracks, you know, people haven't really heard them. They're only on vinyl. We had a lot of them wow. digitized from tape. So oh my like, yeah. So there, there's a lot to be heard and discovered. So yeah. Oh, it sounds so cool. So Friday night, it, uh, admission is free to this event. Yes, it's free, totally free. So mm -hmm. a Columbus Theater is sort of like first come, first serve. Yeah, so it's not the whole Columbus Theater. It's the upstairs of the Columbus Theater because that's where they can screen films. Right. And that's where they have their film club and everything. So it's only 200 seats. Um, and so priority obviously is given to the people who are in the film and the, the families of those people. Um, but then anybody else who comes, it is definitely, you know, people who have RSVP'd on the Facebook group um, a Facebook event can definitely get access, but at this point, it's very close to being completely, totally filled. So if you want to show up and, I mean, if you want to get a seat, definitely RSVP going on that Facebook event. Um, 
And if not, you know, there'll be another screening in Westerly on the 28th. We could potentially do another screening, you know, in Rhode Island soon. But um, we will be also putting the film up online in about a month. So people can see it online. But it will be way more fun to see it in, the, you know, Providence with everybody who's in it. Absolutely. And Jeff and I will be there. And we'll have a little talk back after. So. Oh, cool. Oh, man, it sounds awesome. I can't wait to check it out. Anna, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, really excited for you. Best of luck with the film. Thanks, Ava. Thanks for having me on.